Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry. So continue my search for historical knowledge here on the internet. All right, today's video I'm going to be watching is called Gandhi's Letter to Hitler. So that is a pretty eye-opening um, title there. If you're wondering what kind of relationship he had. Is it Gandhi pleading to, to Hitler um, to stop his actions or do these sort of predate you know, Hitler's rise to power and before the war, between his rise to power and the war. You know, there's a lot of things, uh, questions I have going into this, uh, because based on the time frame, it, it could be very different, right, of, of what could be in here, the content of these um, supposed letters uh, could be. So this was interesting to me, and I wanted to check this out, and hopefully you might find this interesting um, as well. If you like this original video, go down below and... Uh, Check out in the description. Um, this is a new channel I've been covering, and it's uh, really interesting. So let's go ahead and jump in. Yeah, today I found out. Good, good channel. The late 1990s, Just found these guys. Gandhi's method of peaceful non-cooperation had already won significant concessions from the British Raj, including the founding of a national administration and local and national legislative assemblies, albeit still under British oversight. Gandhi himself was internationally famous for his various acts of non-violent civil disobedience, including his 241-mile salt march, which, while protesting Britain's monopoly on salt and its high tariff, also galvanized the Indian people against British rule altogether. Yeah, the Ahimsa um, nonviolent approach was what inspired him. Ahimsa, uh, A-H-I-M-S-A, -A -A, I believe, um, as as an, as an approach to be able to ward off, obviously, um, British colonialism in India. Um, India is it's a fascinating story how you know the, it shows the the industrial and imperial might of Britain as a smaller island nation on the other side of the planet could come and colonize the second most populous uh, uh, country on the planet and be able to hold on to it um, as long as they did through both direct and indirect rule for centuries. And Gandhi's nonviolent approach was seen by him as strategic um, as well to have that happen because India had tried before more semi-violent uprisings against the British before if you um, go back like in the 1800s, for example, and you see some of that with the the sepoys and sepoy rebellion in the in the 19th century and things like that. And those those had usually failed. Um, of all the colonies in the world, Britain took India probably the most seriously, more than any of their American colonies or um, those others, because the resources are just incredible there. Um, and again, so so armed revolution had always failed the the Indians um, for this. So this this strategy was. I guess worth using um, because again, the previous failures and that's what you get going on with him. And it worked. It worked. I mean, uh, of course a big influence to how they got independence too, was how the uh, world war two just, just devastated um, the British. They're unable to hold on to their colonies. Um, world war two is, you know, is kind of the beginning of the end of, of clo uh, colonialism um, as these nations that were at war in world war two are unable to hold on to these colonies anymore. And that coincided eventually with the independence of India um, from the British uh, not long after the war was over. With his reputation for effective nonviolent change well established, many implored Gandhi to write Adolf Hitler, whose increasingly aggressive regime in Germany had them worried that a second world war was imminent. Okay. For example, by February 1930. So, okay, so these, these letters are right on the eve of war, hopefully pleading for some kind of alternative. Hitler had ordered the establishment of a German air force, the Luftwaffe, and by March of 1936, Hitler had sent troops into the Rhineland. Both of these acts were in violation of the Treaty of Versailles. Sure, also in 1936... I remember, that's basically the reason why Hitler got into politics in the first place, was to dismantle the Treaty of Versailles, which he thought were basically shackles to the growth of Germany and representing of what they felt was the unfair treatment of Germany after World War I. Hitler had established pacts with Italy and Japan, and in March of 1938, Germany invaded Austria. At this time, 1938, Hitler was named Man of the Year by Time magazine. They True story. A lot of people know that. Um, he was regarded as very positive overseas to a lot of people, as he... And, and, and under his um, under his administration, how quickly Germany got out of their horrible, horrible de depression um, that they were in in the 1920s and uh, like what they did for employment, um, which was just unbelievable. Um, the, the, their um, unemployment, well over a quarter, 30, 
forty percent or so. I forget how well, what it got to at its worst point, and then dropping that into under five percent, I think, unemployment, which is pretty incredible. So he got a lot of admiration from the the um, uh, uh, a lot of the the global community um, before obviously the the more aggressive things, but in the, just the rebuilding of Germany. And remember too, you know, in the West, uh, and even. <laughs> much maybe in the early parts of the war, but definitely before the war, um, the West and, and, and what would be the allied nations saw the Soviet Union and Stalin as far more of a threat than they ever did Hitler. Right. Um, if you didn't know that. Stated, lesser men of the year seemed small indeed beside the Fuhrer. That said, their reasoning for picking him was not to honor his actions up to that point, but to widely publicize his exploits. They noted, among other knocks against him, Germany's 700,000 Jews have been tortured physically, robbed of homes and properties, denied a chance to earn a living, chased off the streets. Now they are being held for ransom, a gangster trick through the ages. Is this, is, are they saying this is also in the, uh, Okay, so it's not necessarily admiration that you're getting for Time Time Magazine here, but just he's just an important person that's happening um, there. And I don't I don't remember exactly what the timeline is. Was this before the Nuremberg? Um, so the Nuremberg the, the laws that were going in um, to to that that really started to um, strip away rights from the Jews. You know um, the the anti-Semitism um, and prejudice towards Jews and systematic taking away of rights was a gradual process, you know, with things like Crystal Knocked and then and the laws being passed to identify Jews and to take rights away and those sort of things. Um, it was a gradual process. So, yeah, interesting to know where, I don't know where in this, this timeline exactly we're talking about here in the 30s. They ended their article on their decision to okay, so the time. man of the year on the ominous note. To those who watched the closing events of the year, it seemed more than probable that the man of 1938 may make 1939 <laughs> a year to be remembered. The year where uh, they invaded Poland, France, the war broke out. Had appeased Hitler's ambition and ensured peace in our time with the Munich Pact that handed over a portion of Czechoslovakia to Germany in September 1938. By March 1939, Hitler had breached that agreement by occupying that entire country. At this point, finally realizing that Hitler couldn't be trusted, Britain pledged to defend Poland if Germany invaded the latter. And did. Seeing the writing on the wall, Gandhi sent a short typewritten letter to Hitler on July the 23rd, 1939, telling the dictator, Dear friend, friends have been urging me to write to you for the sake of humanity, but I have resisted their request because of the feeling that any letter from me would be an impertinence. Something tells me that I must not calculate and that I must make my appeal for whatever it may be worth. So far, it's, it's saying a lot of nothing right now. It is quite clear that you are today the one person in the world who can prevent a war which may reduce humanity to the savage okay. state. Good point. He's not wrong there. I mean, look at that. Yeah, I mean, it looks like like you you could see here in the beginning of 1939 how everyone in the world was had their eyes pretty fixed on the Munich agreement that happened here and the whole appeasement process that that was broken very very quickly as kind of the the, the whole idea of the Sudetenland the the um, dominantly ethnic German part of Czechoslovakia that was handed over um, under the promise that the that Adolf Hitler would not go after any more territory and of course that gets <laughs> that breaks within months and they go and like that like you said um, go into the rest of Czechoslovakia. And this was all done without even having to fight or anything right now. So you could see the world was very concerned about it. And I mean, Gandhi is right about here of trying to appeal to him because his actions are the one that definitely seemed that could be the most influential at this time, um, especially if, if war is around the corner, which looks like there's some predictions that it could be, especially if it goes any further than this. And it already is going further. The one person in the world who can prevent a war which may reduce humanity to the savage state. Must you pay the price for an object, however worthy it may appear to you to be? Will you listen to the appeal of one who has deliberately shunned the method of war, not without considerable success? Anyway, I appreciate your forgiveness if I have hurt you in writing to you. I remain your sincere friend, M. Mohandas K. Gandhi. This letter, though, it never reached the German Chancellor, as yeah. was apparently intercepted by the British government. Shortly thereafter... Yeah, the British tap everything, right? <laughs> they tap everything. Plus, they're a colony. It's still at this time in the 30s. So, yeah, there's nothing that's going to go to to Hitler without the British seeing that. Because, shoot, what if the what if, what if if Gandhi was talking about supporting him or an alliance or something? Of course, the British are going to do that. But they never send it over there. I wonder why not. I wonder if... 
if it was intercepted and they were like, no, we don't want this communication to happen because it, it seems like with how Gandhi wrote this, that this would be something the British would get behind you think as well, because obviously they wanted to avoid war and, um, had, had done the Munich agreement to try to pacify Hitler and would like maybe that extra support. So I wonder why they didn't, uh, um, allow that to get passed on. After Germany signed a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union on August the 23rd, 1939, which kept the USSR out of the war until 1941, till they get invaded. Britain signed the formal Anglo-Polish Common Defense Pact two days later. Right. Germany then invaded Poland with its Blitzkrieg on September the 1st, 1939, and on September the 3rd, 1939, World War II formally began when Britain and France declared war on Germany. Despite facing two powerful enemies, Germany encountered little real resistance during those early months of the war. It tore through the European continent, and by May 1940, Belgium, Denmark, France, Luxembourg, Damn. the Netherlands, and Norway were all occupied by Nazi forces. The Battle of Britain, which saw the British homeland pummeled by a months-long bombing campaign, began in July of 1940. Over the coming months, nearly 30,000 bombs were dropped on London, during which more than 15,000 people were injured or killed. Sure. Now I'm just interested with the topic of the video to see what what is Gandhi going to tell him now that the war is over. Is it just getting more of the same? Hey, you can make peace and do all these things, or is it going to be more condemning? These are just thoughts I'm having before if they bring up more um, Gandhi letters. Once again, on December the 24th, 1940, Gandhi sent a letter to Hitler, this one significantly longer. Again addressing him as dear friend, Gandhi explained that, that I address you as a friend is no formality. I own no foes. My business in life has been for the past 33 years to enlist the friendship of the whole of humanity by befriending mankind, irrespective of race, color, or creed. But taking a harder line this time, Gandhi chastised the chancellor. Your own writings and pronouncements leave no room for doubt that many of your acts are monstrous and unbecoming of human dignity Ooh. such are your humiliation of czechoslovakia the rape of poland and the swallowing of denmark wow this is a different gandhi right that you see this time um just reading this again acts are monstrous and unbecoming of human dignity uh very different tone this time looks like uh gandhi is very upset and i wonder okay so if this the timing is also important with this because you're also going to have japan encroaching in on india um also is this near the time when the famine is going on in india that churchill gets criticized for for um, um redirecting food and, and and products to india during the war which led to uh, mass starvation one of the biggest starvations and um basically i guess genocides of the of the 20th century if that coincides with this and that's also bringing the hostility for gandhi but this is so you got czechoslovakia poland and denmark so i mean that's if he sent that first one in mid 1939 because the war begins in um september and these fall within the next few months so within a calendar year anyways timeline's important here but don't know unless they say it. He also challenged Hitler, noting that although Nazi Germany had lifted the science of destruction to a level of perfection, it is a marvel to me that you do not see that it is nobody's monopoly. If not the British, some other power will certainly improve upon your method and beat you with your own weapon. So this is this has got to be before um, they the the Germans attack Russia. It must be during the Blitz. So okay, so it's before. It's got to be. It's, okay, so it's going to be before the um, Operation Barbarossa and invasion of of Russia. And yeah, that is what happens. I mean, eventually they attack too much, and then you you know double cross the the Russians, and the Russians um, they come and push back big time. You are leaving no legacy to your people of which they would feel proud. They cannot take pride in a recital of cruel deed, however skillfully planned. I therefore appeal to you in the name of humanity to stop the war. I mean, it's not like Hitler's going to care what Gandhi says. I mean, Gandhi is, I mean, yeah, he's a popular figure, but I mean, he, the, the, the they're not going to get independence for a long time. So he's just a, he's a protester at this time, basically. And it's like, why would you care? Hitler doesn't care what the world thinks. Um, <laughs> he's been condemned a lot by this time by everyone and double cross people that he made deals with face to face. So 
I mean, it's not like, I don't know if you ever expected these to have an impact, but they are interesting to see his tone, for sure. Accepted that both men shared a common disdain of Britain, Gandhi continued, We know what the British heel means for us and the non-European races of the world, but we would never wish to end the British rule with German aid. We have found in non-violence a force which, if organized, can without doubt match itself against a combination of all the most violent forces of the world. Yeah, I mean, you'd almost think... You'd almost think that, okay, Gandhi hates the British, and Germans hate the British, although they also they also admire them. It's kind of an interesting thing that deserves another topic of discussion, because there are a lot of things that Hitler admired about the British, um, British culture and things like that. But if anybody has an incentive out here of somewhat powerful leaders to not sympathize with the Germans, but I mean, a common enemy, right? Enemy, your enemy is your friend kind of thing. Um, that, that could happen with this, this case here. And you almost wonder if, why didn't Hitler maybe appeal to Gandhi and say, Hey, you guys hate the British, um, ally with us or whatever, or start your own, um, start, start your own revolution right now. And we'll, we'll back it up or something like that. But I mean, that would have been too much to, to, for Hitler to be able to manage something like that. But, interesting um but again i guess these letters never even made it there i mean they said that about the first one but is that true about the second one too here or these these next ones with a final appeal during this season when the hearts of the peoples of europe yearn for peace is it too much to ask you to make an effort for peace now if this letter ever reached hitler it apparently was too much to ask and now for a bonus fact Although Gandhi was a prodigious writer and was known to use a typewriter, it created a cognitive dissonance in the great leader. Renowned for his disdain of technology, which he thought was dehumanizing, Gandhi summarized his love-hate relationship with the device. I too detest the typewriter. I have a horror of it. But I survive it as I do survive many things which do no lasting harm. If someone dispossessed me of the typewriter, I should not shed a single tear. But as it is there, I make use of it and even believe that some time is being saved. Irrelevant. More useful work. Kind of an irrelevant detail there. Um, Gandhi's change is interesting because he grows up as a lawyer, practices law, um, went to Britain for law school, and came back almost using his education against the British. Which is actually a, a true thing in the whole um, uh, um, decolonization process. A lot of the people end up being de decolonization leaders in Africa or Asia were Western trained people that brought those educational skills back and organizational skills to actually fight against those um, those nations that offered that in the first place. But I don't know what this has to do with anything though. So I really hope you found that video interesting. Oh, it was just I mean, oh yeah, it was just a bonus Please fun fact. Do but... smash that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe smash when you're subscribing. It hit the bell if you're looking for something else to do as well i mean why not definitely check out my podcast it's called the brain food show if you search brain food one word in uh apple podcasts or spotify or wherever you get your shows you're gonna find it i'd love it if you check it out and let me know what you thought of it and i'll see you next time cool when the old videos okay We'll go here. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, interesting to see that. Um, it was really interesting to see from his first letter to the how the tone changed in that second letter. That second letter was just very condemning um, there. And then it seemed after that it was just appeals for peace. We want peace. Be a part of peace. And so it's, like, pretty easy in that first one. Just, uh, you know, hey, like, something bad could happen. Please don't do it. And then it's like, no, you are, what do you say, um acting unbecoming of dignity or something like that, like going after him hard um, that way. And then just appeals for peace. But did anyone know if, if did Hitler receive any of these letters? They said that for the first one, unless I missed it. Did he receive any? Did he ever get any back? I'm sure they, they probably would have said that if he did, we'd, we would have seen that the Hitler ones, but um, so if they didn't make it though, then I guess it's just really uh introspective on, on um, Gandhi's thoughts throughout this. But yeah, there are so many questions running through my head about what it would be like. Would he appeal to the Germans um, as a, you know, enemy, my enemies, my friend kind of thing, as they both have issues with the British, but that never seems to be the case. Although he was saying like, hey, I also not really a fan of the British, but that's not the way I'd want to see this, uh, the British be treated. Um, so that, yeah, that's, that's interesting there too. But all right, well, neat. Yeah. Um, 
definitely add that those little side stories and stuff use those in class and um get get uh probably have that discussion of what do you think you know like gandhi's uh message would be to hitler probably have a good conversation about that so anyway if you have any comments about it definitely leave them down below best place to actually get a conversation going if you have not is to join our discord server so our discord server right now is over 4200 people in it um, very active a lot of history-minded people that are really good to talk to and we have channels for about every historical time period and region about possible so definitely um join and be active there's a link down below other links that you'll see in the description to the original video will be down there as well also if you'd like to support the channel you can join our patreon which um, you're able to get some discord benefits as well as uh, vote in polls that i put in for videos that get featured on this website but thank you so much for being here today um, thanks for subscribing liking the video doing all those things it really does help and means a lot to me all right we'll see you next time bye